Luigi's Mansion, my favorite video game released three days after 9-11. I mean, come on, who doesn't love Luigi's Mansion? It's such an easy game to pull out every once in a while and play through in an afternoon or two. You're bound to miss a few treasures throughout the game, and getting a gold on every boss is extremely difficult. Combined with it only being a few hours long, and it creates a game that you can pop in every few months and still never get tired of. Now, personally, one of my favorite things to do in games is beat them. No kidding, right? I love 100%ing games. Being able to check off every checkbox a game has to check off is just fun and fulfilling to me. However, not every game is so easy to 100%. Some games just have so many things to collect and do that fully completing them can take months, if not years, of play. And some games are just simply not meant to be 100%ed, hence Luigi's Mansion. As I mentioned before, Luigi's Mansion is a very replayable game, so you're not really supposed to collect every single last treasure and perfect all of the various boss fights. Because of this, it is made extremely difficult to 100% Luigi's Mansion. Now, people have of course done this already, but I've never personally seen a video fully in-depthly documenting the challenge of doing everything in Luigi's Mansion. So that's essentially what this video is, a documentation slash guide. I just thought it'd be neat to make a video showing every little last treasure the game has, as well as demonstrating the perilous difficulties of completing this challenge. The rules of this challenge are pretty simple, collect all of the treasure hidden throughout Luigi's Mansion. Uh, now, some of this treasure can be permanently lost though, like coins that despawn after getting hit, or from speedy spirits, gold mice, and treasure chests. Because of how easy it is to lose money, I decided to allow myself the liberty to save and reset as often as I wished. The only problem with this being, it's very possible I could save at a point where I've permanently lost some treasure and not realized it. Uh, also, I have to get a gold on every boss. Technically, I already have to do this for the portrait ghost in order to get all the pearls, but not for the boss ghost because you don't earn anything from defeating them. However, I would consider getting a gold on every ghost, whether relevant to the in-game earnings or not, to be part of the 100%ing process. And lastly, I'm doing this challenge on the NTSC version of Luigi's Mansion, inside of the Hidden Mansion. In the PAL version, the treasures vary from each mansion, resulting in different numbers when compared to each other and the NTSC's version's mansions. A uh, similar thing with the 3DS version, with the normal mansion having the same amount as the original, while the Hidden Mansion's numbers are completely different. Uh, maybe someday I'll make a video about those versions as well. Anyways, enough with the introductions, let's start this challenge. Area 1 is the first, and by far the shortest section only having a few rooms to its name. It's also the only section to have loose coins, just lying around. All of the treasure is obtained by checking objects, opening chests, and capturing speedy spirits or golden mice. To start, we should probably cover how the most common means of collecting treasure works, checking objects. I've heard some misconceptions about checking objects in this game, so allow me to clarify. Outside of speedy spirits and golden mice, all objects that can give treasure can give it regardless of whether or not you've lit the room. Sometimes it can seem like certain objects only give money during the dark, but that's simply a coincidence because treasure drops are purely random. There are some objects that have a 100% chance to drop cash and plenty that will never drop money, but none that only drop under the conditions of whether the room is lit or dark. When you know an object can drop cash and hasn't, you have to make it reset. To do that, you must be two or more rooms away from it. If you wanted to reset an object in the parlor, you could head to the wardrobe room because that's two away. But if you just went to the anteroom room and then back to the parlor, that's just one room away, so the objects wouldn't reset. This mechanic can be annoying sometimes because it can take quite a few tries in order to get the treasure hidden in every object. It can also lead you to believe an object doesn't hold any treasure when you've just been getting unlucky. However, you don't have to worry about missing treasures from these objects because no matter what, you can always come back to them if you think you've missed something. The next means of collecting cash are speedy spirits and golden mice. These require you to be the most knowledgeable about the game because you have to know where every single speedy spirit and golden mouse location is. However, once you know where all the locations are, these become fairly trivial. Simply check the object, scan the cheese, or walk through the hallway or room that possesses treasured ghosts and suck them up. There are some issues though, for one actually sucking up the ghost can be a challenge sometimes, and secondly, the money dispensed from these spirits can despawn and does so very quickly. This can be extremely frustrating because if even just one coin despawns, it's gone forever and you are forced to reset. 
This is probably the most difficult aspect about the challenge, despawning money. It not only happens with the speedy spirits and golden mice, but also with getting hit, which in all fairness makes sense, and treasure chests. Treasure chests are the last means of getting money and potentially the most obnoxious. You'd think the ghosts would be, but those you can at least semi-influence where the money flies, but these, there is no control. The cash just spreads all over the place and you've gotta suck it up before it disappears. This is primarily why I decided to save as often as I did, because anytime I got to one of these treasure chests, there's no telling where the cash will fly. I'd recommend saving the gems for last, because when Luigi picks one up, he becomes so overfilled with the joy that he is physically and psychologically compelled to grin and pose. During this brief wave of happiness, treasure can still despawn, so it's practically wasting your time. And that basically covers cash, which means next we can talk about Area 1. As I previously stated, Area 1 is the shortest and the easiest out of all the areas. You start off in the foyer, which already has some cash for you to collect. There's a couple coins laying on the ground up the stairs, as well as a chandelier that drops a few coins and bills. The sneakiest part about the foyer is this little light above the Area 2 door that has 5 coins and can very easily be missed due to its odd location. After that, you should have a grand total of 28 coins and 15 bills. Next is the parlor, which also has some loose coins on the floor and the first instances of ghosts as well as random drops from furniture, like this china hutch here, which the first time around it drops a heart but I come back to it later and now it drops some coins and bills. I'm not gonna go over every single object that can drop money, but I will mention particularly obscure or unique ones. Also, uh, make sure you check like every chandelier or ceiling fan because they very often drop something and can be easily missed. The ante room is next, which is apparently a small room leading to a main one. There's just two chandeliers and three drawers to this room, as well as ghosts that you should definitely avoid because there's a good chance that if you get hit, you lose some coins and won't be able to recover them fast enough, sourcing a reset. The wardrobe room is the first room to contain a speedy spirit, but luckily it's pretty easy to deal with. Simply suck up the first gold ghost, then capture the next two sets of gold ghosts and garbage can ghosts. After that, position yourself properly and open the closet on the right to reveal the speedy spirit and suck it up, making sure not to miss any of the money it drops. The last ghost is hidden in the leftmost closet, and remember, once you defeat all the ghosts in a room, it lights it up, preventing you from capturing any speedy spirits. After you've cleared those three rooms, assuming you've collected everything so far, you should have a total of 123 coins, 95 bills, and 2 gold bars. If you have acquired that total, I'd highly recommend saving at this point. Now we head into the second half of Area 1, which houses some more loose coins, which should bring your coin count up to 134. The next couple rooms, your coin count should be fluctuating between numbers ending in 4 or 9. This is because outside of coins on the floor, the common treasure drop from furniture or ghosts only gives out in increments of 5. This means that your bills should always be at a number ending in 0 or 5. This is useful information for keeping track of money, making sure you haven't lost any yet. Although, if you happen to lose 5 coins or bills and don't notice, it can be very difficult to tell that you've made a mistake and have to reset. The study has quite a few things in it. Of course, there's Neville, the first portrait ghost, but there's also a speedy spirit and a golden mouse. These were the first few ghosts that I struggled to capture and collect all of their money. I would recommend sucking up the book that flies at you before you do anything else. And uh, you do have to suck it up with the poltergust. If it crashes into a wall, it'll simply respawn. The speedy spirit is inside of the chair, and the golden mouse is next to it with the cheese being to the right of that same chair. There are also some books on the table that have bills in them that you should probably also suck up before capturing the ghosts, just so you don't have to worry about accidentally opening them, adding on to the amount of treasure you already have to collect before they despawn. However, you should also probably be careful about checking and opening those books, because it's very possible to accidentally check the chair, while checking the books, which would then spawn the speedy spirit, and then that's a whole thing, so just, just be careful. Now, Neville himself is very easy, especially if you're playing in the Hidden Mansion. In the Hidden Mansion, Luigi's Poltergeist is twice as powerful, allowing you to suck up ghosts far easier. It's not that the Poltergeist has a better grip or is stronger than usual, it's just that it deals more damage. Ghosts can still escape from you just as easily. However, because you deal more damage, you can still suck up ghosts way quicker than usual, which in turn makes the fights easier. Not only because it means you spend less time actually having to suck up the ghosts, but also because of poison mushrooms. 
After roughly 10 seconds of sucking up a ghost, they'll drop a poison mushroom. That can be really hard to avoid, and if you get hit by it, more or less means a reset. Thanks to the increased damage, you can defeat most bosses before they even get the opportunity to drop one. Also, once again, you have to get a gold in every boss, but all that really means is that you have to get the big pearl from each one, which requires you to deal 90 damage to them without getting interrupted whether from a poison mushroom or from them escaping your grasp. Honestly, once you've gotten the hang of it, getting a gold in every boss is pretty easy, with a few exceptions. Just make sure you're always pulling away from them. You can wiggle the control stick sometimes to deal a lot of damage, especially on the earlier bosses, but later it can be hard to get away with that. Even if their health is dropping slowly, it doesn't necessarily mean they're about to escape. Uh, just be aware of that. Anyways, Neville's very easy, so moving on from him, and on to Lydia, who resides in the master bedroom. Uh, make sure to spin that ceiling fan, it takes a couple seconds, but it drops a bunch of bills. Lydia herself isn't too much more difficult than Neville is, so simply let the draft in and suck her up. Lastly, head to the nursery to grab the coins from the light, and also to nab the last loose coins in the game, as well as what should be the last treasure in Area 1. Wake up Chauncey, hit him with the ball, and fight him. Chauncey is really not too difficult, at least on the NTSC version. His rocking horses are pretty easy to dodge, and while the balls can be a bit annoying due to the camera angle, they don't deal much damage, so it's pretty easy to suck up coins if you do get hit. Also, again, I'm getting a gold in every boss ghost, even if it's technically not required to get all the treasure. If you're doing the same, just remember you need to be at 90 HP or above in order to get a gold rank on boss ghosts. Upon defeating Chauncey, grabbing the key, and heading back to the lab, your total treasure should be 213 coins, 165 bills, 3 gold bars, 1 emerald, 1 ruby, 8 small pearls, 8 medium pearls, and 2 big pearls for a grand total of 9,665,000 G. Not a shabby start indeed. Now we start Area 2, which has a lot more than Area 1 did. The big difference with this area is the hallway. There are a litany of decorative vases throughout the Area 2 hallway, and most do have randomly given treasure. I'd recommend checking each vase passingly throughout Area 2 and keeping track of which ones you have and haven't gotten treasure from. Just to make things clear, the vases that you should be getting treasure from are the far left one and the far right one on the southern hallway. The far left one gives you a gold bar, the far right one gives you 10 coins, and the far left and far right one on the like northern hallway, where the right one gives you a gold bar and the left one gives you 10 coins. Those are the only four that you should get treasure from. And like I said, just check them periodically throughout area two. There's also a golden mouse in this hallway that randomly spawns, uh, more specifically to the east of the Area 2 door in the middle of this three-way. Now, the first thing to do in Area 1 is head to the basement on the right, checking the light on the stairs and the one in the break room to nab five bills and coins. I should also mention that after Area 1, your new coin count should fluctuate between numbers ending in 3 and 8. This is because of those coins from Chauncey's Rocking Horse. Next, clear out all the blue mice in the room, of which there are quite a few, and check the table on the left to reveal a speedy spirit. Suck it up and head to the bathroom to defeat the ghost to obtain the key to the ballroom. There's not much in either of these two rooms, literally nothing in the bathroom and only the chandeliers in the ballroom. Defeat the floating Orlindas to access the storage room. The storage room has yet another speedy spirit, but this one is a little tricky. No matter what, there will be some ghosts in the room while you're trying to capture this thing. What I did was stun the first purple puncher so he would disappear and immediately check the chair to the right of the door to unveil the speedy spirit. Assuming all goes according to plan, you should be able to suck up the nerd before the other nerd comes back. However, you still do have to deal with the purple puncher while sucking the blue ghost treasure remains. Simply keep stunning it so that it'll disappear whilst you collect the cash. Once you're done with the rest of the storage rooms, ghosts have released the booze, head back to all the previously lit rooms to capture the booze. I suppose I should also mention that I am getting all 50 booze in the game as it is required for collecting all treasure. Once you're done ghost hunting, you should have 7 booze caught in a key to the washroom. There's not only a key in the toilet, but also some coins in the light and some bills in the cabinet. That key lets you into the fortune teller's room, which houses not only Madame Clairvoyer, seeker of lost items, but also a slice of cheese located behind her chair. On the right, you'll find the mirror room, and after defeating the ghosts, a fire metal. There's not much in these two rooms, just a bit of treasure in the drawers, and literally nothing in the mirror room. Light the candles to obtain the key to the laundry room, and head there. The laundry room has more treasure in it than you'd think, as well as Mario's hat. But most frustrating is this godforsaken bucket. 
You see, the programmers put this bucket a little too close to the wall, and when you hit it, there's a chance for five coins to pop out, but they just kept falling out of bounds. Eventually, I got all the coins, but it was really annoying. I definitely recommend saving before checking this damn bucket. Anyways, after clearing the laundry room and opening the chest from it, you can then head into the butler's room to grab the treasure hidden in there. Don't forget to check the far less obnoxious and more generous bucket in the bottom left corner to nab a sapphire. Next is the appropriately named hidden room, which is hidden through this mouse hole. As you'd imagine, there's a lot of hidden treasure in the hidden room, as well as some elemental ghosts. Two things, one, make sure to grab both of the gold bars from these trophies because they're random and easy to miss. Second, when opening the green treasure chest, save those three gems for last. They can be a bit difficult to avoid though, so try to suck and move around them. After clearing out those three rooms, light Shiver's Candle Opera, head back and suck them up, giving you the key to the conservatory, which is apparently a college for the study of music. I had only ever heard the term be used for like, greenhouse type stuff. Uh, there's not much to check in the conservatory, as none of the instruments give money, but there is still a little cabinet and a light fixture. Melody's not too difficult, assuming you know your music, and after defeating her, you get another key. This one is for the dining room, which has quite a bit in it. Of course, there's the large fat man of the middle of the room being Mr. Lugs, but there's also a speedy spirit in the leftmost china hutch, and a golden mouse's cheese next to the rightmost chair. These gave me some trouble because of how long the room is, so the cash can fly super far across it. The golden mouse isn't that bad though, because you can move it around it into a corner or something by vacuuming it and dragging it around, which is kind of fun to do. Suck up Mr. Lugs' food, I guess? It always just looked like a plate full of parmesan cheese to me. Then survive his barrage of heartburn fireballs and suck him up. Mr. Lugs is actually the first boss I had to reset, uh, because of how big and fat he is. You can get away from the vacuum's vortex pretty easily. Once you win, collect your prize and head into the kitchen, which has another speedy spirit and golden mouse. This time they're not too bad though, just make sure to suck up the pots and pans that fly at you before checking the oven to release the overcooked ghoul. Also, the golden mouse has a random spawn rate, so keep checking the room for that. After clearing the room of ghosts, you'll get a water medal, but before you grab a drink, light the rightmost oven's pot on fire to reveal a ruby, and a very sneaky one of that too. I had no idea about this one until making this video. Lastly, be careful with the right cabinet. I had some coins disappear, but I'm not sure if they, like, clipped through the wall, or if they just got stuck behind the fridge. Now, with the power of hydration, you get to head back to all the plants you've seen so far to water them, and receive some rewards. The only plants so far, though, are the ones on the balcony to the left of the wardrobe room, and the singular plant in the master bedroom. Then, go back to the kitchen and head outside into the boneyard. Water not only the spooky dog's bowl, but also the bud planted in the dirt. Play around with Spooky for a bit until Mr. Bones appears and suck him up to retrieve his bone in order to distract Spooky and put the poor mutt out of his misery. Even if he kind of already is. Scan the glimmering doghouse to pop out on the other side and into the graveyard where the last treasure of Area 2 resides, being this ruby inside of the pipe on the bottom right corner. Also, by the way, once you enter the graveyard, I don't think you can leave until defeating the boss ghosts, or of course resetting, so just make sure you've got everything before heading in. Lastly, some of the three Mr. Bones enemies, which I'm pretty sure is their names. Maybe it's just that one Mr. Bones, or maybe their names is just skeletons or something. I don't know. I think having multiple Mr. Bones is kind of funny to me. It's sort of like Mr. Mime. Uh, anyways, defeat them and then approach the glowing grave to fight Bogmire, who is really freaking easy in the Hidden Mansion. I did over 75 damage to him in one grab. Wait, come on, this fight's a joke. After defeating Bogmire, grabbing the Clover Key, and heading back to the lab, you should have 653 coins, 485 bills, 22 gold bars, 6 sapphires, 5 emeralds, 4 rubies, 1 silver diamond, 28 small pearls, 28 medium pearls, and 7 big pearls for a grand total of 39,365,000 G. About another 30 million G from Area 2. Moving on from Area 2, we now start Area 3, which begins by taking us back to the Boneyard, where the bud from before has sprouted a bit and we can water it again, becoming a fully-fledged flower. Now we actually head to Area 3, which still starts outside though, and into the Courtyard. There's a few plants around the fountain to water, although for whatever reason, this bottom right one doesn't have anything in it. It's one of the few plants in the game, I think, that doesn't actually give any sort of treasure. And it might be the only one in the game that doesn't, I'm not 100% sure. 
Of course, there's the well that you have to go down to see Mario and also get a key. There's Mario's letter in this birdhouse. Kind of a weird place to put a letter, though. A statue with some money and a toad in this outhouse, but be careful when opening it because it can hit you. Don't forget to clear all the ghosts as well because you do get a great treasure chest for doing so. Next, we have the rec room, which has a bit of cash in it and also a speedy spirit in the bottom right corner cycling machine. At least, I think that's what it is. After that, you can beat up Biff Atlas, who can actually be quite difficult, similar to Mr. Lugs. Once you're done, don't forget to grab the key you get from running on the treadmill to make venturing from Area 3 to Area 2 much easier. Heading up the stairs on the right while making sure to check the ceiling light leads you to the second floor of the mansion. The first room you'll find is the tea room, which hides two golden mice. The tea room is honestly one of the more difficult rooms in this game. There's several plates that fly at you from either side of the room, and they can be hard to suck up due to the two giant tables in the middle of the room. There's also two ghosts in this room, being a pair of white grabber ghosts, which seem to spawn opposite one another on either side of the room. The first golden mouse is a cheese one, located behind the leftmost table. Best way to deal with this one is to suck up the grabber ghosts on the left, and the two plates that fly at you from the left side. Then, scan the cheese and position yourself in the bottom left corner and wait for the golden mouse to come by and suck it up. This traps the treasure in a far more convenient spot than just sucking it up immediately. The other golden mouse is a random spawn, so just keep checking the room for it until it appears. Luckily, it spawns in the bottom left corner, so when you hear that jingle, run over and quickly suck it up. You'll still have to worry about the plates that fly at you and more than likely at least one grabber ghost, but I'd just ignore them. Even if you do get hit, you can still suck up the coins dropped from getting hit, so I'd just keep vacuuming until you've made sure you've gotten all the money. This is the first and only room I actually permanently missed cash on, and also saved without realizing it. I just so happened to miss exactly 10 coins and didn't notice it because my count looked as expected. I then had to completely reset Area 3 and do it all over again. I suppose I should also mention that I recommend copying your file for every area you complete. That's what I did and it ended up coming in pretty handy. Once you've dealt with the ghastly rat infestation of the tea room, finish clearing it up and checking objects like the chandelier and rightmost drawers which have another ruby in them, meaning that nearly a third of the game's entire rubies are within this one room. I just sort of thought that was interesting. Slack up the two grabber ghosts to earn yourself the last medal, being the ice medal. Heading left of the tea room, you'll enter the second floor's main hallway with some more vases to check periodically. This time, the middle vase has a gold bar, the leftmost vase has some bills, the rightmost vase has some coins, and the vase on the right of this bottom hallway has another gold bar. On top of that, there's also a golden mouse that randomly spawns in the bottom portion of the hallway. Best way to check for this one is by going in and out of the astral hall. The first room on the agenda is the second floor's washroom, which, by the way, shout out to this game for putting a washroom and a bathroom on each main floor instead of just having one. That's attention to detail. I mean, they're ghosts, so like, it doesn't really make that much sense, but it's still, I, I like it. Uh, there's a fiery ghost in the toilet, and after going through the hard work of defeating that one ghost, you're given a treasure chest. Also, by checking the light, you'll get three coins. This is the only object in the entire game that doesn't give out in increments of 5 or 10. So after collecting these three coins, your coin count should now fluctuate between numbers ending in 1 and 6 for the rest of the game. After washing up, head to the bathroom with some ice in tow and give Miss Petunia the chills to suck her up. She also gave me some trouble, which is weird, I usually don't struggle with her too much. Also, I think the pearls can sometimes get stuck in the bathtub, so be forewarned of that. Uh, to the right of the bathroom, you'll find Nana's room, where if you scan Nana, she'll call Luigi a funny man. And I do find that quite funny. Nana's room has quite a bit of cash that are throughout it, like in the cabinet and light fixture, as well as the speedy spirit in this left-facing chair. Nana herself isn't too hard, it's just a little awkward sometimes to aim the yarn balls and dodge her grandma laser vision, uh, but it's pretty easy. Next, head to the astral hall and make sure to bring some fire with you to light the candles. There's some treasure in the objects and the ghosts are easy enough, so once you're done, move on to the observatory. There's a gold bar in this little drawer and after shooting the moon to collect Mario's star, you can head back down to area 2. Using the key for Miss Petunia, you can access the billiards room. There's a speedy spirit and a chair in the bottom right corner that can be a bit difficult because the room's so big that the cash flies everywhere. I don't have much advice other than to check the chair quickly before Slim Bankshot over here hits his cue balls and to try to suck up the speedy spirit in such a way that the dispensed cash spews out towards the left corner. As for Slim Bankshot himself, he can be a tad difficult and can escape your vacuum's grasp, but 
it's certainly doable. Just watch out for any remaining cue balls. On the right, you'll find the projection room, which is pretty bog standard with just a bit of cash and some ghosts to defeat, earning yourself Mario's sweaty glove. Now head all the way back to area one, this time using the key you obtained from Nana to enter the twins room. The main thing in here outside of the twins themselves is the speedy spirit in their bunk bed. Just stand on top of the bunk bed and shake it using your vacuum to reveal the slumbered ghost and suck it up, which should keep most of the money on top of their bunk bed. Um, also, I had some money clip out of bounds, but this time it was one bill from uh, this drawer. So, watch out for that damn drawer. Twirl the ceiling airplanes, which for some reason always seemed really finicky to me, and summon the twins. Then play hide and seek with them, which is pretty easy, just vacuum the boxes they hide in, and whichever ones shake means that one of them is in there. Once you've found them, I recommend sucking up Henry, the blue twin, first, as Orville is the one that drops the pearls. You might be tempted to try and do what I did, which is suck up Orville by climbing into the bunk bed. But don't do that, because poison mushrooms exist. Upon defeating them, you can obtain Mario's last item, his shoe! Now, with all of them in your possession, you can take them to Madame Clairvoya, mash through a text, and defeat her. She is very easy. Take your key and finally head up those Area 3 stairs and then another flight of them to reach the third floor. First room is the Safari Room, which while it may not have a grim hunter ghost who wishes to add Luigi to his collection, it does have a golden mouse located to the left of this cheetah print chair. Man, there's a lot of cheese hidden behind chairs in this game, isn't there? Also, by the way, that rumor originally started because of a particularly flavorful piece of text from a Nintendo Power issue. The more you know. Shake the deer heads, freeze the water ghosts, and properly check the room, and then go get some water because the next room has a bunch of plants. The last room of Area 3 is the balcony, which has a border lined with a variety of plants to be watered and a bunch of treasure to collect. By the way, once plants start shaking, you can stop watering them. Use this trick so you don't have to go back and get any extra water. Once you've watered all the plants and collected the last bit of treasure in Area 3, save. I mean, you should be saving fairly frequently anyways, but especially now, because up next is Bulosis. Upon approaching the booze, they taunt Luigi and transform into Bulosis, who is the only truly challenging fight in this game, and to get a gold on him or defeat him with 90 HP or more is pretty hard, especially in the Hidden Mansion. You take double damage, which usually doesn't matter, but here it definitely does. You can freely switch between the regular and Hidden Mansions without consequences, uh, but I didn't want to do that. However, I nearly considered it doing so for this fight, as you can essentially only take one hit, maybe two, if you're lucky. And again, a gold isn't necessary for collecting all treasure, but still. It took me about an hour and a half to win, so here's what I learned. To start, the boos are slow and hardly attack, so what I did was run away from them so they would chase and then turn around and spray them with a bunch of ice. This should hopefully nail quite a few of them and you can do this for a fair bit of them. Eventually they get a bit more aggressive and frightful of the ice, so try to use the ice ball projectile to hit them while they flee. Once it gets down to the last few, it's pretty hard, they start to attack at any given chance and are very skittish. Staying near the frozen unicorn statues for quick refills and ice is a good idea, and using the ice to deter the boos if they get too close is also a pretty good idea. The last boo is always the worst, and whether or not you hit it just feels like luck. Again, I'd recommend trying to nail it with an ice ball, but it's easier said than done. However, once you eventually succeed, you can grab that blue diamond key, head back to the lab, and see your acquired treasure, which should be 1,111 coins, 895 bills, 40 gold bars, 8 sapphires, 8 emeralds, 8 rubies, 3 silver diamonds, 1 fool's gold gem, 52 small pearls, 52 medium pearls, and 13 big pearls for a grand total of 72,660,000 G. Roughly another 30 million added on from Area 3. Now we have finally made it to the final area of Luigi's Mansion, Area 4. To start, we've got to head back to the Boneyard once more to water the large flower one more time and collect a bunch of treasure. I'd recommend saving the gold diamond for last as I don't believe it can despawn. After collecting all that, save and head upstairs to the balcony. Upon approaching and unlocking the Area 4 door, the power of the mansion goes out and you are thrusted into one of the most difficult sections of the game, especially for this challenge. 
You see, during the blackout, not only do the ghosts have a run of the place, but there are also no toads, meaning you can't save the game during the blackout. This is an issue because there are three speedy spirits that you can only get during the blackout, so you have to collect all of those speedy spirits without letting any of their treasure despawn in one go. I don't know how much I've made this clear, but it has been a struggle to nab all of the money from these speedy spirits and golden mice. Some are easier than others, but a lot of them took me quite a few tries. So to have to do three of them in a row without letting any of the treasure despawn is really, really difficult. There are some upsides to this, being that you can clear a room of ghosts during the blackout and still keep the room dark, making it easier to capture the speedy spirits. Also, if you accidentally miss a golden mouse that was in now a lit room, you can still capture it during the blackout. This doesn't work for speedy spirits though, those have more specific conditions, which is a common misconception. Now as for the three speedy spirits themselves, one is found in the conservatory inside of the seat that Melody once sat. There's one in the hidden room inside of the leftmost chest, which might just be the most obscure speedy spirit in the entire game. And lastly, there is one in the nursery inside of Chauncey's crib. You must capture all of these guys and all of their treasure in one go, on top of not getting hit and losing any coins during the most ghost-filled section of the entire game. It's a pretty tall order, but definitely doable, especially if you bring fire with you, because that makes dealing with the ghosts a whole heck of a lot easier. By the way, uh, can I just say that I really like the blackout section of Luigi's Mansion? I like how nearly every single room has a set of ghosts to defeat. Even ones that previously didn't have ghosts now do have sets of ghosts and enemies to defeat. It's just a bit of a shame because you hardly spend any time in this section of the game once you know what to do. Also, how come this is the first appearance of Blue Twirlers? I know there were some in the Safari Room, but those were elemental ones, not regular ones. It's just weird to me that one of the three primary ghosts that you see on the box art and advertising for this game, you don't actually see until the final area of the game. Anyways, once you've gotten all the Speedy Spirits treasure, head to the wardrobe room to find your boy Uncle Grimly, and swiftly defeat him, obtaining the key to the breaker room, so you can turn the power back on. Then you can head over to the cellar, which upon entering and turning to your left, you'll find a crate with yet another Speedy Spirit inside of it. The cellar also has two purple punchers hidden similarly to the Speedy Spirits, and two shelving units with lots of stuff on them and lots of money to get from them. I'd recommend checking these thoroughly and frequently, because it's very easy to miss stuff, combined with the chance of simply getting unlucky with spawn rates of money. Once you've cleared the cellar, you get to head all the way back up to the third floor, through the balcony, and into the telephone room. I needed a whole room for this. There's not too much in the telephone room, just some cash lying around in some of the furniture, some skeletons in some chests, and a treasure chest for defeating said skeletons. Also, this is the point in the game where the boos start to become very, very annoying with how much HP they have. I haven't really mentioned boos much up to this point because they're not super integral to collecting all treasure outside of the requirement to capture them all for the final gold diamond, which I suppose is very important, but I don't know, it doesn't really matter how or when you catch the boos just as long as you do so. I suppose after you defeat a boo, you do get an opportunity to save, and if you save as often as I did, it could be helpful to use them to save at times where it would otherwise be inconvenient to go and find a toad to save. But I digress. North of the telephone room is the clockwork room, which houses the clockwork soldiers, who after starting music played by the clocks laid across the room, begin to attack you. I've heard people consider these guys really tough, but honestly, I think they're pretty easy. The blue clockwork soldier is the only one that drops pearl, so saving him for last is key, which is exactly what you should suck up from the other two soldiers. The hitbox on their toy core guns is pretty forgiving, and if you're about to get hit, you just let go of the ghost. Like I said, the blue one is the only one that drops pearl, so it's the only one that determines your rank. Once you know that, dealing with these three is pretty easy. When they're defeated, ride the toy elevator to access the roof of the mansion. This is one of, if not the only place in the game to not be given a proper name, but I mean, it's literally the roof, so it's pretty self-explanatory. There are a bunch of ghost guys dancing around a fire, and after them are some ice ghosts, nothing too special, and for defeating all of them, you get a key. However, heading over to the right of the roof, you'll find an open chimney leading to the sealed room. 
the third room has the last and most obnoxiously placed golden mouse with a random spawn. If the rat doesn't spawn, you have to use the mirror trick to warp back to the foyer, then walk all the way back up to the clockwork room to use the elevator, then head over to the right chimney just to get another shot at catching this thing. Plus, you have to collect all of its cash without having it despawn. There's also the last speedy spirit in this room, being located inside of the treasure chest to the right of this table. Outside of those two, there's a bunch of treasure in the room, notably three random spawn gold bars inside of these different trophies, similar to the hidden room, which are also very annoying to check for due to the room's dubious means of entering and exiting. Definitely save the middle uh, chest for last because it hides a bunch of ghosts for some reason. Once you've cleared the sealed room, you'll get a key for yet another optional room. Although, of course, for the purposes of this challenge, it's required. The sitting room! They were really running out of ideas for rooms by this point in the game. You must light the two candles beside the painting to summon a horde of gold ghosts, to which afterwards spawn some fire gold ghosts who are easily handled by the conveniently placed fishbowl's water, which can also water this plant. Then you can access the guest room, which houses the sleeping Sue Pea. Wet the bed to awaken the slumbered child, and before sucking her up, suck up her two clown dolls on either side of the room, then suck her up. Even with those dolls gone, she can be a tad difficult, but nothing special, so once you've defeated her, leave and re-enter the room to collect your well-earned green treasure chest, also water the plant. Now, using that key you obtained earlier from the rooftop, head back upstairs to the third floor and go into the armory. The armory isn't anything new, just a standard room with some treasure and some ghosts. I guess be careful when checking these knights because their weaponry can hurt you sometimes. After cleaning the room, you'll get a key, but you'll gain access to the ceramic studio. There's a bunch of jars in here, a variety of which have treasure, and some of which can't even be checked. They'll shake, but never actually produce dust or anything. It's very weird. When you approach this blue and white vase, you're greeted by Jarvis, who challenges you to a game of Freeze the Jar Boy. Upon winning, similar to Supi, wait to actually suck them up and instead suck up the pots that fly at you. There is one issue though, uh, being that it's very easy to accidentally suck up Jarvis while trying to do this as he jumps from one pot to the next. This did happen to me, but I managed to still suck him up and just fine, so yeah, he's really not very difficult. Grab the treasure from his chest and any remaining from those jars and head back down to the basement to use the key from the armory to enter the pipe room. Defeat the nerds and check the bucket in the bottom right corner for it has a sneaky gold bar, and then freeze the toxic sewage using the chilled barrel's ice. Crank the wheel and grab the key and head to the cold storage. The cold storage may not have any treasure, but it does have what I consider to be the hardest portrait ghost in the entire game, Sir Winston. Once you've lit the campfires beneath his chilly encapsulation, he begins to summon waves of ice spikes to attack you as icicles fall from the ceiling in an attempt to shish kebab Luigi. Combined with this slippery terrain makes this fight no joke. You must fully unthaw him using your fire and then try to suck him up while dodging the icicles and managing the icy flooring. This fight took me several attempts and I didn't even suck him up in one go, he escaped. But below 90 HP, so we're all good. After defeating Sir Winston and grabbing his key, you can head all the way back upstairs for hopefully the last time and enter the artist studio. Inside you'll find Vincent Van Gogh, but first you must fight his onslaught of primitive portrait ghosts. They're really not too bad since they all spawn so close to each other and usually you can suck up two or even all three of them. Once those guys are handled, you can deal with the artist himself who really doesn't put up much of a fight for being the last portrait ghost. After that, suck up what should be your last boo and grab your well-earned golden diamond. Then, save. Upon grabbing the last key, there's only one place left to go. Heading down into the basement a final time and walking the twisted winding hallway leads you to the secret altar. It has a sapphire in the light fixture, a gold bar in the top pillared candle, and some cash in the bottom pillared candle and also has one last screw you because the money can clip through the wall. Fantastic. Oh, yeah. Once you've gotten those, this is what your stat screen should look like. Feel free to save the game and make a copy of this. I mean, it's the most complete the game can possibly be without like actually fully completing it. And then approach King Boo and enter Mario's painting. The final fight with Bowser and King Boo isn't the hardest thing, but it's also not the easiest. 
His ice balls can be troublesome, and when his head is on backwards, he can be a tad difficult to dodge. But as spike balls are easy enough, just hide behind one of the mini pillars and properly aim, toss them however you want, as long as you hit him in the face. But, you know, if you get hit, like, even once, you're probably gonna have to reset. However, honestly, that's really not too hard. Finish off King Boo, collecting the last treasure in the game, being his crown, which is another fool's gold gem worth one coin. Ending the game, and this challenge. After heading back to the lab, you should have 1,536 coins, 1,260 bills, 61 gold bars, 10 sapphires, 10 emeralds, 10 rubies, 5 silver diamonds, 2 fool's gold gems, 2 golden diamonds, 76 small pearls, 76 medium pearls, 19 large pearls for a grand total of 142,390,000 G, the most amount of money you can possibly have in Luigi's Mansion. So here's the thing, upon attempting this challenge, I was curious how I would feel after the fact. I mentioned earlier that Luigi's Mansion is a very replayable game, and that's due in part to the difficulty of collecting all of the treasures scattered throughout the game. And I was worried that after completing this challenge, I would lose that sense of replayability. I mean, I did collect all the treasure, now there's not really any better I can possibly do. However, that's not really the case. Now that I know where all the treasure in the game is and more or less the best way of collecting them, I just want to try and beat the game again, but this time without ever resetting. Just try and see if I can truly 100% Luigi's Mansion in one full genuine go. Plus, there's still more to Luigi's Mansion. I mean, I never went over the 3DS version or the PAL version, so even then there's more. I don't know how much I can recommend this challenge though, because being honest, it's really tedious having to reset so often. Maybe I'm just awful at properly collecting the treasure and doing so efficiently, but it's really annoying. I would definitely recommend trying to fully 100% Luigi's Mansion, just maybe not with the constant annoying resets. Unless that still f sounds fun to you, then be my guest, but just know that this run took roughly three times longer than a normal playthrough of Luigi's Mansion. Either way, I hope you enjoyed this video. If nothing else, let me know if you're gonna attempt this challenge or how close you've gotten to 100%ing Luigi's Mansion. I do always read the comments no matter what. Anyways, thank you for watching, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.